The Seattle head tax, still a very huge topic today, will be for a while. Monday, the city council unanimously passed the plan to implement a per employee tax to help fund the city's affordable housing and homeless crisis. So we're looking at $275 for each employee every year. Amazon has been a vocal opponent of the head tax and the company put out a pretty harsh statement. Let's take a look at it. It said, um, the city of Seattle revenues have grown dramatically from 2.8 billion in 2010 to 4.2 billion in 2017, and they will be even higher in 2018. Amazon also said the revenue increase far outpaces the Seattle population increase over the same time period. So we wanted to know, is that true? Well, we did some research and here's what we found. We found the city of Seattle's total budget for this year is $5.6 billion. Three billion of that total is for utilities like Seattle City Light, SDOT, and also Seattle Public Utilities. Another 680 million goes to public safety like police and fire. So yes, Seattle's revenue is up two billion since 2010, but it's mostly uh, linked to utilities and transportation. Meanwhile, Amazon's response only told you part of the story. So it's always a good reminder to always look for the context. We know Angela is going to bring us more context from the side that supports the head tax. Angela. That's right. Thanks, Michelle. We're joined now by Seattle City Council Member Teresa Mosqueda. Thank you so much for joining us to talk about this. Before we get started, if you want to text a question during this interview, you can just text us at 206-448-4545. Now, council member, you were one of the original sponsors of the head tax proposal. What was your response to the statements that came out right after the vote from Amazon, from Starbucks? What yeah. was your take on that? Well, first of all, Amazon and Starbucks are part of our thriving economy here in Seattle. These companies, along with so many others, have benefited from our local workforce, our investments in transit, the opportunity to live in such a beautiful place like Seattle. Mm -hmm. But the prosperity that some of these companies have seen isn't being shared. We have people who are quite literally dying on the doorsteps of prosperity. I know it's bad for business when people are sleeping on the doorsteps of our small businesses. I know it's bad for the health of our community when we see folks outside. So I know that they're frustrated that we see people living outside. So am I. Starbucks men and children and families living outside. Mm -hmm. This is exactly why we needed additional revenue to get folks inside into shelters right. and ultimately into housing. And we get that, but their accusation was that the city was being inefficient with the resources that were already there. And when you look at the budget, I think $240 million for for human services and housing. We know not all of that is homelessness, but their accusation is that, and honestly, from people texting us throughout the week, it's been that the city hasn't proven itself efficient in this manner. So what is your response to that? Yeah, as you've heard, our population growth has been tremendous here. We have 57 people moving to our city a day. At the same time, we see skyrocketing rents. I'm a renter myself, the only one on council. I know many of your viewers are probably renters and have experienced the rent increase as well. With a $100 increase in rent, we see a 15% increase in homelessness. So there mm. is a correlation. When we have increases in rent and we don't have enough housing for the lowest income folks or shelters for folks to move into, that's when we see people living in our streets. I know Seattle's very compassionate. A lot of the revenue sources that you mentioned relating to transportation and vet services and health services have come through levies. So yes, there's been an increase in some mm. funds, but not directly for building the type of low income housing and shelter that we need to meet this population growth. Okay, let's just take a breath for a minute because as you know in this area we have a lot of people who study this issue and work on this issue of homelessness. So today our Natalie Brand, she reached out to Sarah Rankin. She's a Seattle University professor and she's also the director of the Homelessness Rights Advocacy Project. Mm -hmm. So we asked her, considering all the resources that we have spent on this issue, has the city made progress? So here's what she had to say. No. I don't think that the city has made substantial progress. Um, I think the fundamental problem that the city has is the lack of a coherent strategy uh, and the inability so far to really communicate what it is that they're doing to their constituents. So even the progress that the city has managed to make has not been effectively communicated to their constituents. It's complex to explain the sort of interventions that the city's attempting to make, um, but they haven't made a sufficient effort. They haven't made a sufficient effort to explain what it is that they're doing and why they're doing what they're doing. Okay, now for the sake of Teresa, because you're not able to hear because of technology we have in place, you weren't able to hear what she said. But she basically said that we haven't made a lot of progress on the issue. And she said she 
is not seeing a strategic plan in place to address the problem. And she also talked about the lack of communication to constituents mm -hmm. on the issue. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess I mean, I'm curious about that because you know, being one of the original sponsors, and it seems like the information, some people just didn't feel like the information was there in terms of communication. Would you agree that the communication could have been better? And is there a strategic plan in place? A yes strategic to plan. both. Yes to both. So on, on the first issue of making sure that we do a better job at the city of communicating to the public what we've done, we can do a better job. I know our folks, our hardworking folks at the Human Services Department are doing the best they can with the few tools that they have. Last year alone, we moved um, individuals off of the street into housing. 5,000 units were filled with folks who were current, previously living outside who are now inside. But that is not enough to serve the underlying problem that we see in our street. So we are doing a good job. We could do a better job of communicating. Number two, I want to make sure that folks know that with this plan, we will have a finite implementation plan that addresses the most urgent need, and that's housing. If we, if we want to get folks off the street, we need to actually build the shelter and housing. Did you know that our shelters are at capacity. So if we want to get folks off the street, first they have to get into shelter. And if our shelters are at capacity, the reason is because we don't have enough housing. So our plan focuses 66% of the funding into housing. And I want to also address one other thing. Okay. Folks have said this is a regional issue, and I absolutely agree. The crisis of homelessness is far bigger than our borders, but it is far too important to ignore right here in Seattle. When That's 73 percent of folks who are homeless in King County live in Seattle. So this is leadership. We're trying to act with urgency. Other cities like Portland ha also have payroll tax and head tax. So we're not making anything up here. We want to look at best practices and get folks inside. And to do that, they need housing. Right. Okay. We'll get to more of what you talked about in a moment. I just want to bring in some of our viewers because we have been getting some text messages. So let's pull those up. So someone says, since this tax is going to help the homeless, what will the city do about the people that refuse to mm -hmm. take advantage of the resources? Mm -hmm. Great point because it's, sometimes it's not just about affordable housing. It's addressing sometimes mental illness the drug problem. So to that question, what is your answer? That's right. We know that the most important thing to create health stability is to get folks into housing. If we want folks to have access to mental health care or substance abuse treatment or just general preventative health, they need housing in order to be healthy. And 93% of the people on Seattle streets right now would move into shelter or housing if it was available. We have that data to show it. Right now, we just don't have the shelter capacity. But see, here's the difference. I mean, affordable housing, you have to have some income right you have to have some income and we do know there are some openings right now according to the website much of what we're building will actually look at zero to thirty percent of the area median income so you have some folks who um, unfortunately can't work but a lot of the folks who are living outside do work. They work at places like McDonald's and Starbucks. We've mm -hmm. heard reports of people being Uber drivers. We want to make sure that there's enough housing in the city for those who are working in the service industry or stocking our grocery stuff right. or writing the code in our city for Amazon to be able to afford to live in this city. So many of them do have jobs. We just need to make sure that they have the housing so they can be stable. Okay, well, we appreciate you coming by to shed some light on yes. what your thinking was on this. We know that while the vote has happened, there's still some wiggle room in terms of specific how the money is spent, correct? That's so correct. are you committed to coming on on the show at a later time to talk about this when that Absolutely, when it comes? Okay. and I would encourage your viewers to come in and give us some feedback. My background's in public health, so I'm gonna be looking at housing investments and the health care investments that we know the community needs. Okay, well have a great day. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you so much, I appreciate right, it. Let's go to Chris.